Hello Humbrers! Welcome! Hope you're having a great one. It feels like it's been an eternity since I've made a video. I mean, I know I made a couple of videos, but I'm used to making a couple more than that. So, you know, life gets in the way of having fun. But we're back and we're going to have some fun. So what we're going to be making today is some beer. Now, instead of saying I'll be making whatever beer it is by using a beer kit, we're going to be using this stuff. Now, this is Rena's Essential Organic. Oh, yes. <laughs> malt extract. It is edible malts, so it is slightly different from a beer kit malt. I mean, they're both made of malts, but usually beer kits have got bulkers and stuff added in, and you add sugar to it. This is just malt, which is nice. The only downside to it is you don't know what you're going to get. It is a lucky dip, but opening it up, oh, it smells so good. It is just a massive tub of malt, five kilos of it to be exact. So one of these set me back 10 pounds. That's cheaper than a beer kit. And if I made a five gallon batch, I could use this five kilos of malt to create a five gallon batch of all grain beer because it, it quite literally is that and it's even organic. Ooh, sounds fancy. Now you may be wondering where I got these from because they're normally 20 pounds a pop. So I went onto this website that I use to buy random bods and sods and it is called a proof foods. It's there. So sometimes they have some great stuff, other times they have some terrible stuff. So it's kind of hit and miss what you get. But basically it is all the stuff the supermarkets can't sell that is still perfectly good to eat and you get it at a fantastically discounted price. Oh yes. So you don't just have to homebrew with it, you can also do your shopping with it. Ooh, who knows? So I will stick a link down in the description below that will send you to approved foods and you can have a look for yourself if you're interested. So. We're going to make a gallon batch of beer using this. I'm expecting it to kind of be a dark beer. The closest thing I can come up with to what it's going to be like is either a full bodied Scottish dark beer or a porter. Yeah, don't know. It's a bit of a luck of the draw. So because it's an unknown, I'm making a gallon batch. And on top of that, we're going to be making this a fruity beer. Oh even better so i was talking well i was reading the comments and when i did the honey beer which is carbonating so i can drink its tasty goodness because you know honey beer is good um greg bond oh yes i see you uh, said i should make a framboise framboise whatever it's a it's basically a fruity beer Usually it is made with a raspberry, and I have some raspberry stuff, but that's raspberry syrup, and yeah, that works. So I'm not gonna be using that, because that's too ordinary and simple. Instead, I'm gonna be using about 500 grams of the blueberries. Oh yes, now these are reduced, but they set me back like ATP, so I, you know, I gobble up the deals where I can. Cheap beer, why not? So, I've talked enough, Let's make some beer. So the first step is we're going to have to measure out our malts. Now, the great thing about edible malts is they already come with the nutritional values on the front. It's, it's labeled so we can approximately work out how much we're going to need. And a kilo gives us the magical 550-ish grams of sugar, which brings us up to somewhere around the 6% mark, approximately. It's a good rule of thumb. It's, it's, yeah, I use it in most of my videos. That way, if you don't have a hydrometer or you want to roughly work out how much it is, you can just go by the sugar weight. So, oh, that is multi goodness. So I've got a set of scales and I got a little jug. That's e-juice because, you know, I like to vape. So I'm going to measure out two 500 gram batches because my scales are chemical ones and not kitchen ones but look at that that is that's malt oh yeah and it gets everywhere so let's try and do this 
This is going to take a minute or two, I think. Ah, so it's all been measured out. For those people that don't have scales, because I know I get asked the question. Mold extract in a measuring jug, you know, this litre measuring jug, cheap thing, everyone has one, is about 400 mil. There you go, who knew? So I'll roughly works out as uh, 120 grams or 125 grams per 100 mil. And I can't help myself, you know I have an addiction to beer malt, or just malts in general. Mm. That is some tasty malt. Mm. Right, stop playing with that. Um, just too good. So, our malts are really quite thick. So I've boiled the kettle, and I'm going to add in some boiling water to loosen it up. I even kept a spoon. Oh, this is forward thinking. Normally I would have licked the spoon and then kneaded the spoon again. So let's just loosen all this up. And we're going to add in our blueberries into the pan. Oh yes. So it's about 500 grams of blueberries. So if it's slightly under or slightly more, it doesn't matter. So let's add them in. Oh, blueberries. Oh, I'm gonna eat that one. Mmm, iced blueberry. Mmm, that is pretty nice. So uh, let's just add in our malts. As long as it's in the pan, I don't care. Well, that worked out better than I thought. So, uh, yeah. More boiling water. So I've mixed in all the malts and I've stirred in the boiling water. At the minute, it's not really that important how much water you put in. I put about, I don't know, 1.5, 2 liters, something like that. As long as it's under, your total amount you're gonna use should all be good. So I've got my blueberries and my malt in there and, well, I'm gonna turn on the heat. Now I'm mainly doing this to make sure that I break and pulverize all of those blueberries. So they were frozen, so they should be nice and juicy. And I'm just gonna go through and, uh, well, basically heat this up so it's nice and hot. So when I add in some hops, got a tiny bit of bittering, but not a lot. Mainly just to extract all the juicy pulp from those lovely blueberries. So uh, I'm just gonna squish blueberries in a pot of multi goodness. Should be fun. So basically I've let this heat through, I've crushed all of those blueberries to extract all the juicy flavors. And quite literally, like three or four minutes ago, I added in three grams-ish of the citra hops because well they're my favorite and I want some hops so I can turn this off now it is heated through it's sterilized we've got the hops we've got the blueberries it's all good now comes the fun part so I am going to be adding in another two grams of the cluster hops but I'm going to be dry hopping these because uh, these are pretty good for bittering but they actually have a I think they have a pretty good flavor if you dry hop with them it's just my opinion and that smells delightful. It smells a bit malty. It has that blueberry edge and I'm getting some of those citra hoppy notes. It smells really good. So I'm gonna dump this in a cold water bath or, you know, just putting it in my sink with the plug-in and cold water. Makes it sound fancy if I say water bath. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Be back shortly. So it's been about 20 minutes and this is now cooled down lukewarm at best. So I've taken the time to rinse out my five liter water container and it is fresh, doesn't smell of bleach. So uh, no bleach in there. So usually I would say never add bits into a demijohn or a five liter water container because it normally pukes everywhere and that's not what you want. But since things are being rather slow here because it's cooler, I'm hoping that this is not going to puke everywhere because there are bits if i was going to strain those bits out i would heat this up and boil it give it a good boiling and then let it cool down naturally with the lid on and that would give it a longer steeping time 
the longer you leave it to steep, the better the flavor. But the best flavor you can get is if you macerate it on the pulp. So uh, that's exactly what I'm going to try and do in a demijohn, and hopefully it doesn't puke everywhere. Fingers crossed. So <laughs> that being said, because I knew someone would ask, let's pour this in here and you can actually see what color it is because uh, I tried with the action cam. It doesn't show how beautiful the color is. Now I am using a funnel because I'm a flid and I end up pouring everything everywhere, but it smells so good. Oh, it's got a bit of the citra hot twang. It's got blueberry hints and then it's got the tasty multi extract. So hopefully you can see the color. I mean, Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Need a pokey doofer. Don't do this, he says while doing it. Everything has been sterilized, so in it goes. Oh yeah. It has a blueberry hue to it. It is dark and, oh, it's looking good. So my battery rudely died. I should have charged it before doing it, but oh well, never mind. I learned something. So I've topped this up with cold water, uh, rinsed it all out, looking good and given it a damn good shake. The only thing you missed was me adding two and a half grams of the cluster hops. But fortunately, I did that on another camera. Huh. So we're just waiting for the foam to die down. I've got my hydrometer, which has been sterilized. It's just been in fresh water. So uh, it's gonna dump that in and uh, we're gonna see what we've got. So the foam has pretty much died down. I can now see the bottom of the hydrometer and I can instantly tell it is higher in percentage than I was expecting. Now it could be the blueberries that have knocked it off but really it is one two three four percent higher than I was expecting, because it's reading at uh, right at 10%. 10%. So if I pop this out, 10% is approximately 1.060. And since, oh, that tastes good. Now I'm actually thinking it is the malt extract itself is not entirely accurate. It's the blueberries, the amount I added in, should have knocked it out by about half a percent because blueberries you know they're very tasty superfood Ooh, but um for 500 grams in one of these it's normally normally negligible so uh that's why i don't include it so i'm thinking that the malt extract is slightly off i know my scales are accurate so the only thing left is the nutritional value on the side it is an approximate thing taken from various batches so We've actually made a 10% alcoholic beverage. Now, uh, some of those carbohydrates are not fermentable, but at the same time, that's still quite high. I'm not gonna argue with it because I like stronger beers. Should be good. Anyway, so that has thrown a spanner in my works for that. So next time I make this beer or another gallon batch of beer, I will use 800 grams. Whoa of malt extract and we'll see if that comes out at about the six-ish percent that I was expecting. Live and learn. This is why I did a smaller batch. So the yeast I'm going to be using is actually this. This is from a beer kit but uh, it's just ale yeast. I just happen to have the open packet so I'm going to use that. No nutrients are required because well it's malt. It already has all the stuff in there and the blueberries also have lots of tasty vitamins and minerals. So just sprinkle some in the top. Stick on the lid very slightly. And hopefully this is not going to explode everywhere. Famous last words, I'm gonna eat my words, I'm sure. So I'm gonna put this in a pan or something just in case it does puke, because it does have loads of bits in here. And we're gonna leave this to ferment. Now usually it takes about two weeks for something like this to ferment, but it is colder. So 
I'm not going to give a date. It's probably going to take three or four weeks current temperature. That's just how it goes. But the slower fermentation should mean it's less likely to puke everywhere. That's the plan. That's why I've done this instead of a bucket. So we shall find out. So on that note, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Something different, something to think about. Don't forget to check out some of the other ones and subscribe if you feel like it. Carry on homebrewing, guys. See you later.